So let me give a little bit of lead up to what we're watching here. Uh, this is Kent Hovind talking about how he believes that dinosaurs lived with humans or currently live with humans. And he needs that to be true for his flawed interpretation of the Bible to actually work. So what he's trying to do right now is convince us that the Loch Ness Monster is actually real. So I have Real Pumpkin J on here with me, and we're going to go through this part of the Kentoven video and listen to him try to justify his reasons for believing that the Loch Ness Monster is real. You ready to watch? Oh, yeah. I have nothing prepared, but I've actually watched this when I believed it. Really? So it's pretty strange. Yes. That's crazy. I so actually, you actually believed like the whole Kentoven <laughs> stuff and watched it at one point, huh? Oh, yes. Well, the thing that is, is this. Uh, after I got married, I was basically thrust into a foreign culture. And the only contact that I had was via my husband. And he believed it. And he showed me the entire series. And for a while, I was convinced. Until basically reason got, got me back. But um, How long yeah. ago was that? That was 2007. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, when did you get out of religion? When did you stop believing it? Um, I started deconverting um, somewhere 2014, 2015. Mm. So um, right when Logic did his Hoven series. Logic? Like the YouTuber Logic? Yep. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, I remember when I was a tiny little fella on YouTube. I had 40 subbies. Yeah. Logic discovered That's, me. You know, somewhere around that area is when I followed you. I saw I saw you on his channel. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, Logic is awesome. He was my first big YouTuber that I ever worked with. And I remember passing him in subscribers for the first time. It was about 115,000 subbies. And I was like... I tweeted out a message and shouted him out and was like, you know, he was my mentor and he helped me out and now I'm passing him. It's crazy. So anyway. All right. Well, why don't we watch the Kent Hovin stuff and see what he has to say about the Loch Ness Monster. Are you ready? Ready. All right. Roadbed was cut into the side of the mountain because before 1933, if you wanted to see the lake, you got to climb over the mountains or go up river seven miles in your boat. So not many people went there. Very sparsely populated. 1933, the first year the road was put in, there were 52 separate sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. Hmm. This author said there have been 9,000 reported sightings today. Now, that was back in the 1960s when this book was written. Today, it's over 11,000 reported sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. You know, when I was like in, I think, high school, I remember this kid doing this whole project on how the Loch Ness Monster was completely and totally fake, and he went through, like, all the hoaxes and everything, and I was like, what a bizarre subject to do a project on. Like, why would he even bother? Because it's so obviously fake. Like, everybody knows it's fake. And now, here we are with somebody who really believes that it's real. Yeah, I could have actually, earlier when uh, when you asked if, uh, talked about, uh, you mentioned Loch Ness. I'm like, yeah, he believes that too. <laughs> absolutely bizarre stuff dude i had no idea that he really believed this but here we are oh yeah yeah how crazy he has to yes there's another one um that he also believes that uh they found a skeleton wasn't a, wasn't of course what he wanted to wanted it to be but still um he has to have evidence of modern of modern dinosaurs essentially that are not birds otherwise everything falls apart absolutely insane yeah that's true and honestly i don't know why the dude doesn't just accept that you know the bible was being metaphorical or it's just an origin story it's not actually real why is it that he goes through all the the painstaking work of like making up sources and lying about this i just don't i just don't get it honestly it blows my mind that was, what's this fallacy? What's this fallacy where you have invested too much into something that now you have to believe it? Sunken costs fallacy. That's true. Yeah. There you go. That one. Yeah, that's true. That that seems like where the dude is at at this point. Fakes and frauds. Okay, discover. I, was, I wouldn't trust the you know uh, weekly world news. You know <laughs> where they got all this weird stuff in there. But Sir Peter Scott's a member of Parliament. He said he saw it. He believes it's a plesiosaur. Almost everybody that sees it says it's this animal right here, a plesiosaurus. Plesiosaurus isn't actually a dinosaur from my understanding. I think it's like a, some kind of a, a big fish, technically. I don't remember what the 
the differences are. But anyway, um, I don't care who claims to have seen it. I need evidence to believe this stuff, honestly. That's just what it is, you know? If I believe eyewitnesses like that, I would believe hundreds of people who saw the sun dance at what was that? Yeah. Um, what's that miracle? It's a Catholic thing. Oh, yeah. It wasn't it in Mexico or something. There's like a they think that they saw the sun like move across the sky or some mm -hmm. crazy thing. Yeah, I remember hearing about it's that. It's not too. a sun dancing. It's a, it's a Catholic miracle thing. Yeah, but Ken Tovind is selective in what he believes, of course, and, uh, on no evidence. <laughs> Believes it's a plesiosaur. Almost everybody that sees it says it's this animal right here, a plesiosaurus. Long neck, four big flippers. One guy wrote a book and he said, some people think Nessie is a plesiosaur. There's one thing wrong with this theory. Plesiosaurs are believed to have become extinct 70 million years ago. Oh, is that what's wrong with the theory? I think this evolution theory has got to be the biggest hindrance to scientific research there's ever been. Uh, wait, what? Can, let me just step back and listen to that one more time to try to get a grip on what he's saying here. Uh, oh, hang on. The, uh, the gist of what he's trying to say is that um, if it weren't for the fact that they are believing that it isn't possible because of the evolution the theory, they would, uh, they would understand that it is a plesiosaur. Right, okay. So he's saying... You don't believe it because the plesiosaur lived 70 million years ago, and that's your problem. You're, you're unwilling to believe. If there was evidence for it, I would believe it instantly. It's just that there isn't. He doesn't provide any evidence ever. That's my problem, you know? He's basically trying to say, just beca because you don't believe it, you're not looking at the facts, and that's basically it. Just look at the facts and come up with your conclusions, okay? Arthur Grant nearly ran into Nessie on his motorcycle one night. He said, I had a splendid view of the object. In fact, I almost struck it with my motorcycle. It had a long neck, oval, uh, large oval-shaped eyes on top of a small head. The tail would be five to six feet long. He describes it, 15 to 20 feet long altogether. He said, knowing something of natural history, he was a veterinarian student, okay? He said, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Here's the sketch he drew of what he nearly ran over on his motorcycle. I, I'm sorry, I'm just not accepting sketches. If you have the, you say you almost ran it over with a motorcycle. If you had run it over and we had the body, it would have been verifiable. I simply can't trust the word of this dude or anybody this dude's connected to. I feel that's well established at this point, you know? Yeah. Also, um, is the plesiosaur that small? How big is the plesiosaur? Just out of sheer curiosity, let's see if he's even correct here. Actually, not bad. It's uh, 11, 11 feet, feet, looks like. Yeah, yeah. 11 feet, uh, and it's three and a half feet tall, looks like. Okay. Even the little facts, he doesn't seem to get correct. I mean, there's no reason to believe him, really. Like, literally none at this point. He has proven himself to be completely untrustworthy through the entirety of the thing. It's crazy. Alexander Campbell was the game warden for Loch Ness for 47 years. He said he saw it 18 times. There's the sketch he drew of it. Many people have tried to catch the Loch Ness monster. They've used everything you can imagine for bait and some things you could not imagine. So, so And that, isn't that convenient? No one has ever caught it. N not only has no one ever caught it, no one has ever verifiably even seen it. Like, we have cameras. Also, um... We just established that Plesiosaur is 11 feet long. This one's 30 feet long. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess uh, this is supposed to be a Plesiosaur in his mind. The story keeps getting longer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so far, nobody's caught it. I mean, the lake is huge. But there have been many, many sketches drawn. <clears throat> one family said they saw it with a sheep in its mouth. <clears throat> one guy got a picture of the hump sticking out of the water. The neck is over on the far right. Then Reader's Digest, of course, they crop everything down. They cut the neck off when they publish their picture. Uh, is this some conspiracy that he's trying to establish? He thinks Reader's Digest is trying to trick people by cropping the neck out or something like that? Like, give me a break, dude. Uh, he's basically saying um, the evidence is all there, but you've been duped into not believing it. I was hoping he was going to show a verifiable hoax. Like, there are a couple of pictures that I know for a fact to be hoaxes. Some of them that he's shown may actually be hoaxes. Like, one person specifically took a little tiny toy and put it in the water mm -hmm. and took a picture of the toy 
and forced perspective made it look like it was gigantic when it was just a toy. I haven't seen that one in here yet. I'm so hoping that he shows it. Oh, my God. Pages that we just digest have. Jesus Christ, good point. 424 pages in this Reader's Digest. My dad used to read Reader's Digest back in the day, and I feel like it only had, like it was a big magazine, but not 424 pages. I feel like it only had like 80 pages in it or something. Reader's Digest, Strange Stories, page 424. Let's just look this up. Let's see if we can find it. Um, is this even real? I found one. Strange Stories, Amazing Fact. 608 pages that's a yeah okay actually well there you go out. this one uh, source <laughs> it looks like it's possible that maybe this one is real um uh, so a, a point in kent's favor i guess unfortunately he's working in the negatives at the moment as far as points go so oh yeah <laughs> all right let's keep watching a picture but mark mcleod said he watched it for nine minutes through binoculars and made four sketches of it of what he saw McLeod said, I think the monster looks like this. <clears throat> All you got to do is, you know, watch TV programs once in a while where they talk about the Loch Ness Monster. There are thousands of people who will go on record and say, I have seen it. World Book Encyclopedia paid to have a submarine taken over there from South Carolina, the mini-sub. Great. You know, they have a submarine taken over there that I'm sure has pictures and everything. They were searching for evidence. That's great. Now, here's the question. Did they find any? Let's, let's find out. The guy went down in the water and said, that water is so black, I can't even see the front of my own boat. Loch Ness is like a giant mud puddle. You go down in... Wow, how convenient. So it's tentatively, I mean, we're going to have to listen more, but tentatively it sounds like it was just too dark and dingy to get a picture. How convenient is that? And there are just a few yep. feet. Visibility is zero. Of course. Can't see a thing. <laughs> Japanese put 24 boats, went all the way down the lake, and reported they scanned the bottom with radar, sonar, and said, man, this is a deep lake, and it's wrinkled up like a raisin. And there are caves going off to the side. Probably with air chambers, the creature can come up under, and you know, go under the, inside the mountain and breathe and live in there. One guy got a... Notice the use of the word probably there. Like, he, the dude has absolutely no idea, and he has no scientific evidence to support the things that he's supposing here. But he's going to present it as fact anyways to school children. So the, uh, there are peat particles in the uh, water at Loch Ness. And that's why the visibility underwater is actually pretty poor with the... Uh, um, yeah. Interesting. So okay. that is something that is true. But the thing is that it's still no evidence. Right, it's not evidence. There are that many sightings. So you would find something if there are that many sightings. This is an extraordinary claim, and it's going to require extraordinary evidence. You're telling me dinosaurs are real and still alive. Like, give me evidence for that, you know? Extraordinary evidence. It's crazy. The descriptions vary, so it's, it's, uh, it doesn't even make sense. If the descriptions were all the same, you know, if, if everybody's seeing the same thing, they should all see the same thing. But if the descriptions vary, there's going to be something wrong with it. Right. And somebody in the chat says Sonar could find it. Uh, Go G. Buehi, I think, says that. Yeah, Sonar could find it. I mean, there are a billion ways that we could go about finding it. It's not as hopeless as he wants to make out, but here we are. You can't see it vis vis visually. You can't visualize it. But that's pretty much it. You can use other methods. Right. It, it's like... All Kent is leaning on right now is this anecdotal evidence. Like his, uh, his evangelist buddy saw this, and that's enough proof for him. Well, I'm sorry, it's just not a, uh, it's not enough proof for me, and it's not enough proof for science. We need more than that. Yep. Again, they thought it was a plesiosaur. Reader's Digest published this picture, and back in '78, pictures right there on the floor about Nessie with Nessie with its mouth open. <coughs> Wait, is this the fake one? I think this may be the hoax. Yeah, the one that I remember is the one with the neck sticking straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the hoax one for sure. Uh, it looks, I guess this one looks similar to it. Uh, just for good measure, let me just pull up the hoax image real quick on screen so you guys can see what it looks like. This is the hoax image. This was completely fake. This is just a toy in the water. You know, people still believe this stuff. Apparently, this image is owned by Getty Images. Why would Getty Images? Anyway, 
Not even going to go there. All right. Are you ready to continue? We can go all day about Loch Ness Monster, but they said this photograph was a fake, and it probably was, but I don't. There you go. Now he's showing the fake. The surgeon's photo taken 1933 may have been. No, it was faked, as a matter of fact. We know it was faked. Oh, yeah. Some claim the last surviving nephew of the surgeon admitted it was faked just before he died. No, it was fake. We know exactly how it was faked. We can reproduce the picture and everything. It was fake. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. They waited till the last guy involved died to announce it's a fake. Now, how do you check out the truth? But anyway, there are other lakes besides Loch Ness. There's Loch Lochie, Loch Morar. There are many other lakes reporting creatures. There's one called the Morguar, the Cornish Sea Serpent by England. The English Channel has many reported sightings of a creature like this. In 1749, <coughs> in England, a creature was caught resembling in some degree an alligator, but having two large fins. Wait, what's this say? Sea dragon? Uh, it looks like it's a... a Definition in a dictionary, sea dragon, noun, a marine monster caught in England in 1749, resembling in some degree an alligator, but having two large fins. Okay, just because a word is in the dictionary does not mean that it's actually real. You know, we have unicorn. The word unicorn in a dictionary, too, does not mean unicorns are real. It means people use that word sometimes. It's just so bizarre to me that this dude isn't connecting the dots. He can't. This is the sunken cost fallacy. He must believe that, you know, dinosaurs live alongside humans. He must. Also, um, if you if you pull it up, if you uh, Google for it, you'll get images of a seed, a seed of the sea dragon. And it's essentially like a, um, like it's basically like a dragon uh, drawing without the arms. Yeah, there are a billion, de like, the, the Kraken is not real, that gigantic sea monster or whatever, but, yeah. you know, Kraken is in the dictionary because people use that yeah. sometimes. That's a word that we use. It's just bizarre how this guy thinks. But anyway, you ready? Yep. The body was covered with impenetrable scales. It had five rows of teeth. 1934, this thing washed up on the beach in Normandy, France. There's a guy uh, standing there looking at it for scale. Is this a picture or is this a drawing? I can't tell. Monster on the beach. I think it's, I think it's a photo. Oh, okay. Is it a man for scale? Weird. Yeah, is this even real? Um, see, this 25-foot creature washed up on the beach in Corquiville, Normandy, France, in March 1934. Two professors from Paris Natural History Museum analyzed the creature, said it was definitely not a whale, not a sea cow, it's possible we are in the presence of an unknown species. Okay. Well, does that... I mean, assuming this is real, which I have no reason to believe because he lies about his sources all the time, but even assuming that it was, does that mean that Triceratops wore, like, saddles so that Adam and Eve could ride them around and that Jesus died for your sins? This says it's possible we're in the presence of an unknown species, not dinosaurs live among humans. I am just blown away by this dude's logic. Uh, a couple of scientists reported this creature swam past their boat in Brazil in 1905. They reported the whole thing in a scientific journal. The creature had a long neck, <clears throat> six feet long. <clears throat> two feet. Notice he says it, it was reported in a scientific journal, but he doesn't seem to tell us which journal that was. Nope. A, a scientific journal wouldn't tell an anecdote. Scientific journals are intentionally designed to provide evidence and make claims and explain the process of how they came about uh, coming to the conclusions that they came to so that other people can try to reproduce that. That's what scientific journals are yeah. about. Peer review. Right. But that's not what's happening here. They're just saying that this scientific journal claims to have published an anecdote of some sort. It's just bizarre, dude. Feet high. Yeah. Um, the dorsal fin, I'm sorry, was six feet long, two feet high, a small head, on a neck about seven or eight feet long. Two experienced British naturalists reported the thing. And again, we can go all day on reported sightings. This thing, in 1977, a Japanese fishing boat pulled this up in their net. It was 32 feet long, 4,000 pounds. That one is definitely uh, something else. It's not, that's not a neck. It's half, half decomposed. And uh, I've seen it somewhere before. Are you accusing Kent Hovind of faking something? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. This 32-foot-long creature 
weighing 4,000 pounds, was hauled up from 900 feet down off the coast of New Zealand in 1977. It was dead, rotting, and smelled terrible. After examining the creature, it was thrown back. Isn't it convenient that we can't actually examine any of this stuff? And his source is Mm creationresearch.org. I'm sorry. If you want me to believe something, you're going to have to give me something more than your own website. It's like that time, like, I don't know. (laughs) I, I think this is from, like, Seminar 1 or something. He used the website omniology.com omniology I, I i don't know if the uh, the listeners are familiar with omniology.com mm-hmm. but it was just like this bizarre looks like a geocities website from the 2000s that somebody threw together and yeah. tried to prove all this baseless crazy stuff and and he's using it as a source that's exactly how this feels creationresearch.org as a source like give me a break man and i found it uh, the uh, Zio Maru carcass is uh, the corpse of a most likely a basking shark that was uh, that was um, found um, off the coast of New Zealand in 1977. Right, there is a likely explanation for this stuff, but he goes mm-hmm. with the least likely explanation because it backs up his crackpot, baseless, bizarre conspiracy. That's how this guy works. Ready? Yep. Yep. What is that? Captain said, I don't know, but it stinks. When they set it down on the deck, it broke in half and pus oozed out everywhere. So they made a bunch of sketches, took a bunch of pictures, and shoved it overboard. Thanks for that imagery, Kent. Appreciate it. Special stamp was made for Japanese mail, 1977. Now, some people argue that it might have been a basking shark, and I agree, it might have been a basking shark. How about that? So there's the answer. I mean, the guy acknowledges that there's a hole in his conspiracy, but he's trying to make you think it's acceptable to look at the other possibility. It's not. It was a basking shark, more than likely. That does not mean it was a dinosaur. It means it was a basking shark, more than likely, right? And I thought he said it was off the coast of New Zealand, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. But it was a um, Japanese fishing trawler, Zio Mm-hmm. Okay, because I saw uh what one thirty five oh seven. Give me a second. I noticed that it said Nippon. That's the mm-hmm. Japanese word for Japan. For I, Japan, so I wasn't yeah. sure. I thought he said it was in New Zealand, but yeah, that checks out. Okay. I, st- I stamped. <laughs> uh, uh, I collected stamps as a kid, so yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> stamps are pretty awesome. Now I collect retro games. I used to collect stuff like coins and things, and coins probably would have been a better collection, but yeah, I stuck. To I have. Retro games. I have a stamp. Um, with the face of the queen's grandfather on it. Like, is it a super rare one, I guess? That's from... I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure there's not that many around anymore at this point. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of just general collections. I think it's pretty cool. All right, you ready to continue? Yep. 1977. Now, some people argue that it might have been a basking shark, and I agree, it might have been a basking shark. But the fishermen on board said, we know what basking sharks are. We don't think it is, okay? Basking sharks, they tend to rot away, leaving the head part behind. There's a basking shark right there. Okay, It could have been a basking It doesn't matter to me. They said the protein is 96% similar. Yes, I know, but nobody's ever seen plesiosaur protein Okay, to know what it's supposed to look like. Wow. So um, I guess he's saying that a plesiosaur and a basking shark are indistinguishable from each other uh, as far as like the, the proteins go. Like If you do these tests, you can't know for sure if it's a plesiosaur or a basking shark because they're so similar. This is just ridiculous well, dude, from the ground up. <laughs> he's basically saying we don't know what uh, um he what he's essentially doing is he's saying that um we don't know enough about the plesiosaur and let's question everything that we know scientifically and just say maybe. Basically right. as if we were starting fresh from scratch. Right, exactly. He's doing everything he can to justify the ridiculousness. All right, let's uh-huh. keep listening. They look like humans and apes are similar, but have many differences also. Anyway, there's a lot of arguments about that. It doesn't matter to me, but some people get all bent out of shape because they even mention, you know, the Japanese catch of 1977. Now, he wants to make it out like there's a controversy and he's trying to teach the controversy. There really isn't. There really isn't this controversy nope. that he wants to make out. So Russians report a creature in the lake up there. They called Mystery of the Lake here. 
a dinosaur, what looked like a dinosaur, washed up on the beach in Russia in 1994. It was 39 feet long. This thing apparently <clears throat> is a doctored photo of a shark. Somebody with Photoshop, you know, made it look like a, a plesiosaur, but actually it's a doctored photo. But, uh, so be careful. There's plenty of frauds out there, no question. But the existence of a fraud or counterfeit does not disprove the existence of the original. Okay, so did he just show us an actual doctored photo and, and point that's out that it's fake? Said. Yeah, that's what it he said. He said, look, like this one's fake. <laughs> it, it feels like he's trying to convince you that there is a controversy, where in reality there isn't. He hasn't given us... So it, here's what he did. He made a bunch of claims about people going into the jungles and finding this stuff and didn't provide... A single photo is evidence. Not one skeleton is evidence. And then he went through a bunch of things that could have acted as solid evidence if they were real, but they happened to be hoaxes. He's mixing the hoaxes in with the anecdotal claims that are unprovable and making people feel like it's possible that it's real. It's absolute nonsense. Or, as Kent Hovind would say, right poison is 99% good food. <laughs> right. He's trying to look like he is um, neutral. He's saying, well, this one's wrong. This one's definitely false. We don't know about that one, etc., etc." So he's basically uh, going at it so that the people that are listening to him will not necessarily listening, be listening to anyone who is saying that those are hoaxes. Because they'll right. say, well, yes, there are some that will be hoaxes, but that doesn't just prove that uh, this is wrong. Right, he's trying to play like a moderate, where in reality he's not moderate mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. He is so far removed from reality. He's just ridiculous, man. But anyway, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. And by the way, your <laughs> English is flawless. Was it a first language? Did you learn English early on? No, no, it's my second. I, I learned English in fifth grade. Well, it's flawless. <laughs> it was really, really good. Thank you. Um, was there anything you wanted to say before you get off here? Anything else you wanted to touch no, on? No, I, th I think I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming on. It's been fun. Uh, maybe we'll get to do it again one of these days. Definitely. All right, let's listen to Hovind play some Breath of the Wild. In, in 2004, a bunch of people in Papua New Guinea reported a creature like a dinosaur, 10 feet tall, with a head like an alligator, or tail like an alligator, a head like a dog, right there on the island in the city of Kokopo. One lady said she saw it, she ran for her life, seeing a three-meter-tall creature with a head like a dog and a tail like a crocodile. And a head like a hole? Black is your soul? Yeah, if this is true, prove it. All you gotta do is prove it. Show me some evidence. I'm not gonna believe you without evidence. Plain and simple. You can read all about it on the internet about this creature seen just in 2004. Japan reports some of these creatures. The North, Lake, North Island, Haikoto, reports them, and the South Island down here in Japan. They call it Ishi in Lake Ikeda. In China, there's reported uh, one called uh, USO, Unidentified Swimming Object. Uh, <clears throat> Norway has several reported sightings, as do Swedish lakes, a couple of Swedish lakes up there. They call it, does anybody speak Swedish, know how to say that? Stores, Jordan. Close enough, yeah, okay. You don't speak Swedish, do you? That's, you're lying, okay. Uh, in Norway, they've got a creature. They, they say it's very similar to the Loch Ness Monster. Hundreds of folks claim they've seen it. It's in the news occasionally, kind of like Loch Ness, okay? Occasionally? It's in the news occasionally? Awesome. That means there's video footage of it, right? Oh, there isn't video footage. If it's real and it's in the news occasionally, there should be. I'm not accepting this without some modicum of evidence. I'll take nearly anything. Canada has reported sightings of these creatures, Canadian lake monsters, Nessie's Canadian cousin. There's a lake in the town of Kelowna uh, called the Lake Okanagan. It's a huge lake. It's 80 miles long. I've been up there twice to speak in the town of Kelowna. The, na the natives call this creature the Ogopogo. We sell a book uh, on our table back there if you want to get that. The Ogopogo, very similar to Loch Ness Monster. Thousands of folks claim they've seen that one. This article says they were the latest among thousands to see something strange in this narrow 80-mile-long lake. You know, honestly, this really is a full-blown conspiracy theory. Like, that is not an exaggeration. That's not just me being mean. The fact that he is trying to convince people that the Loch Ness Monster is real, it seems just as absurd to me 
as him trying to convince people that Bigfoot is real. It is cryptozoology. That's what it is. Cryptozoology. He is. He should be just as likely to believe that Bigfoot exists as he is to believe the Loch Ness Monster exists, right? I mean, they're equally as absurd as far as I'm concerned. That is Ken Tovin's whole belief system. Absurdity beginning to end. That is what it is all about. And this was played for kids, school kids, seriously. One guy swam the length of the lake and said the thing came up under him, scared him half to death. I got news articles like crazy about this. And she said, I saw Ogopogo twice, this woman says. I interviewed uh, John Caruso. He and his family were sleeping in their boat on the lake. They're camping out on the lake in their big boat. And something bumped the bottom of their boat and woke them all up in the middle of the uh, early, early in the morning. They went out and saw two Ogopogo swimming across the lake. He went back, grabbed his camera. By the time he got it, it was, you know, pretty far away, but he gave it. Convenient, huh? By the time he got his camera, it was pretty far away. How about that? Well, when you get your camera close by and show me a real picture, I'll be more likely to believe it. Not a moment sooner. It's a copy of the video footage of what he saw at about, you know, quite too far away to make out the details. But he said, look, Brother Hovind, I saw the Ogopogo. Many, many folks will go on record and saying, I have seen it. There's one in Cadborough Source or Cadborough Bay, British Columbia. There's a book about that if you want to read more. A baby caddy was found inside the stomach of a sperm whale. They say it has a, long, a short pointed front flippers and a long necked, uh, uh, long necked beast with a horse like head. One guy caught a baby one with his dip net, drew a sketch of it before he released it. He didn't know what it was, so he let it go. Yeah, genius. That makes complete sense. You don't know what a creature is, so you would let it go, right? Not suspect maybe it's something new that no one else has seen either. Not try to figure out what it is. Not contact somebody or take a picture of it or something. None of that, right? Just assume people already know what it is, so you throw it back. And then report it to people, recognizing that it's something new or something unique. I mean, the fact that the guy comes out and reports it as, like, having seen a dinosaur or something like that tells me that he wouldn't have thrown it back if he really did believe this. But, like, logic doesn't play into the equation here. Simply bizarre. Simply bizarre that this guy honestly believes any of this. I interviewed this guy for an hour. These four guys were fishing in Canada when a creature chased their boat off Cape Sable Island, Nova Scotia, when I was preaching up there. Uh, it happened in 1992 uh, when I met him. He said uh, he was 67 when this happened. He'd been fishing out there since he was five. He said this 40 to 50 foot long creature chased their boat for one to two miles. He said the neck was two feet thick and eight to nine feet long. It had nine inch diameter eyes. He said they were six miles south of Cape Sable Island. He said, I don't want to see it again. That's what he told me. This thing washed up on the beach in Newfoundland. Sometimes big blobs wash up. Sometimes it is whale skin, actually. The whale dies, gets eaten, and the layer of blubber, you know, washes up sometimes. Sometimes it's a basking shark. Parker Cove, this thing washed up in Parker Cove, Canada. I talked to many folks who said they saw it. A lot of people went and analyzed it. I don't think it's ever positively determined what it is. It might have been a basking shark, but nobody knows positively. <clears throat> Well, how about that? So why are you claiming that it's something very specific? Why are you implying that it's something very specific when you know nobody knows this for sure? Like, why are you giving people this misconception that we know? Because he wants to trick you into believing that creationism is real. That's why. It really is a conspiracy theory. Creationism, it's a conspiracy theory. I, I'm comfortable calling it that at this point. Well, nobody knows positively, <clears throat> but it's gone. People cut pieces off it. The vertebrae do tend to look like shark vertebrae instead of uh, any other kind. It's just interesting. The stuff like this washes up on the beach. But We sell a book called Monster Monster about North American lake monsters. Lake monsters and sea serpents. Uh, a good book by Lauren Coleman, who is a cryptozoologist, but also an evolutionist. Okay, I debate, I, I debate nothing. I, I interviewed... Uh, Okay, cryptozoology is not a real scientific study. The fact that he's trying to make people think that it is tells you all you need to know about Kent Hovind. It's not a scientific study. It's people that hunt for Bigfoot. 
Seriously. Jacques Boivet for three hours. He collects sightings of the Lake Memphremagog creature between Vermont and Quebec, Canada. Hundreds of folks claim they've seen something in this lake up there in Mem Lake Memphremagog. Well, when they produce some evidence, I'll believe it. Not a moment sooner. Creature's been seen in the Potomac River. There's a book about the great New England sea serpent. There's an island off Connecticut in Rhode Island called Block Island, where many folks claim they've seen creatures swimming around out there. They call it the Block Ness Monster. <laughs> One washed up in 1996. Another was something else washed up in 2004. Never was identified that I know of. And I interview people all the time. Lake Erie's apparently got one. Erie's Bessie matches Nessie. They say it's 35 feet long, has a snake-like head. It's in the newspaper once in a while about Lake Erie's monster. Okay, you can read all that for yourself. But uh, <clears throat> A dead baby creature was found on the beach of Lake Erie. A guy took it home, stuffed it, and mounted it. He's a taxidermist. He said, you tell me what it is. I don't know. Then show us evidence of that. Show us some evidence. Show us. Let us examine it. Let us examine the physical structure. Let's see it. For some reason, this has never been examined by scientists and verified. If it was actually verified by scientists, it would simply be recognized as a new species. But no. It's never that simple. Somehow, Scientists just never get around to examining this species that's never been seen before, that's newly discovered species, as if there aren't a billion science professors out there, a billion biology professors, who would love to create a new reputation off of this brand new creature. No, big science is working against him to prove evolution true. It's nonsense. Dr. Ball bought it. It's in his museum in Texas. It's never been identified. They're not sure what. It may be a fake. Nobody knows. But Maybe a fake. Nobody knows for sure. Have you noticed that he says that basically about every single thing in this? Maybe a fake. Interesting little critter. I interviewed the sheriff. We saw that was the first guys to see the Situate Harbor monster, 50 feet long, when it washed up on the beach. Everybody started cutting pieces off. By the time they got the photo taken, it was pretty butchered up. Some people argued it's a basking shark. Others said it's a real sea serpent. The health department said, we don't care. It stinks. We're getting out of here. And so they blew it up with dynamite. California, 1925, this critter washed up on the beach. That's the head. Here's the neck going down to the right. Wait, isn't this one a fake? I think this one is a fake. I think this was a hoax. I don't remember. Does anybody know about this one specifically? Uh, Cali wait, Shipwrecks and Sea Monsters of California's Central Coast by Randall... Reinstead, page 167, available from Creation Science Evangelism, 650. Wow. I think this one is a hoax. Um, this one specifically. Let's see. Well, this one's going to be hard to, to figure out, but here's what I'm going to do. To figure out if like where this is from originally, I don't have any idea how to go about figuring this out, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a screenshot of the picture. I'm going to go to Google Image Search. I'm going to search by image, upload the screenshot that I just took, and then I'm going to search and see what pops up. A bunch of weird YouTube videos in a d different language. Some website about fake creatures. They have a thing with like a chupacabra on here. I mean, let me just here. I'll sh I'll show you what I'm looking at. Hang on. So I, I click on one of the links and it takes me to this page. So I, I'm translating it from another language. What language? I don't know. Um, Vietnamese, maybe? Anyway, this is what the website looks like. I have no idea. I mean, for some reason, they have this picture from Kent Hovind's seminar on here. 720 amazing and funny animals ideas on Pinterest. 800 paranormal haunting images and the unexplained ideas, 250 beyond the P lay ideas, macabre creepy oddities, 40 gorgeous Loch Ness monster ideas. So this is supposed to be the Loch Ness monster, I guess. Like all of these pictures are from some foreign websites, all of them. Oh, wait, this is here. Check this out. So this is forced perspective. This is what Kent Hovind did. Okay. Forced perspective. Just make this big for you. All right. You see what we're looking at here. 
looks like a dinosaur head, right? And this is the neck right here. And you've got a person standing way, way, way back here. This is forced perspective. This person, here's a more accurate depiction of the size difference. A person is standing a lot closer right here and right here. And this is a bigger image. It was a rock. It was a rock. That's what we're looking at. A rock. It was a rock formation. It was not a dinosaur. It was not the Loch Ness Monster. Here's another picture. It's a rock formation, not a dinosaur. Such a cheap trick, and people believe it. All it takes is just some basic sleuthing skills, just some basic critical thinking to bust right through this nonsense. And when you find out, like, what Kent Hovind is doing here, when you realize, like, the tricks that he's pulling, you tend to get more and more disgusted as time goes on. There is no way he didn't know this was a trick. No way he didn't know this was fake, that this was just a rock formation. He went in search of these images, and he found anything that looked even a little bit like it. This is a known hoax. He bought it despite, or no, he showed it, despite knowing it's fake. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Just the neck was 20 feet long. No, it was a rock formation. Well, everybody that examined it said it was a plesiosaurus. 20 foot neck. One atheist wrote me a letter and said, Hovind, you're so stupid. He said, don't you know that was a whale? I said, now just exactly where is the neck on a whale? <laughs> Ought to be between the head and the flippers. Hmm. He said, it's a rare form of Bard's beaked whale. Oh, it's pretty rare, right, with a 20-foot neck. I mean, it could be any number of things. It looks like a rock formation, and it's a known hoax. Like, the only websites that you can find this on are creationist websites or websites from, like, Vietnamese, like Vietnamese websites or whatever. Like, I don't even know how Kent Hovind came across this picture originally. But the whole thing is absurd, top to bottom, and he's faking it. And he doesn't care that he's faking it. Duh. The people who saw it said it's a plesiosaurus. Why is that so hard to believe? Why is it so hard to believe that it's a plesiosaurus? Because, first of all, a plesiosaur is not a dinosaur. And second, there is absolutely no evidence of any other plesiosaurs around. We still haven't seen any evidence of this plesiosaur. If it's real, show us. We should be able to go there and examine it, right? Or at least find its skeleton? We can't. It's not there anymore, apparently. Somebody hit it or something. I don't know. You know why people resist explanations like that? Because there's no evidence for it, that's why. It goes against their theory. They like the evolution theory because it gives them freedom from God. That's why they like that theory. And we can spend... No, honestly, I don't even need evolution to not believe in your claims about God. ...all day on cryptozoology stuff. I have studied this for years and love. I've interviewed now a hundred people that claim they've seen a living dinosaur. In New York, 1969, the Harbor Police chased something much bigger than a whale upriver. Never did catch it. Could have been a Zooglodon or a Basilosaurus, I don't know. But the White River Monster in Newport, Arkansas has been reported many times. Up until 1973, it apparently disappeared. Arkansas Senate passed a resolution that said it's unlawful to molest, kill, or trample the White River Monster. Off the coast of Jupiter, Florida, something's been seen similar to a dinosaur swimming in the ocean out there. You can read the articles for yourself. A lot of this stuff's on my website, Dr. Dino. You can read all about this. There's like, again, I, all I need is evidence. He's not providing any, and he hasn't provided any this entire time. Nothing. The lake between New York and Vermont called Lake Champlain, where many people claim they've seen the Lake Champlain monster. I interviewed Sandy that took this picture. I said, Sandy, do you think you saw a dinosaur? She said, no. I know I saw a dinosaur. She and her husband... That looks eerily similar to the uh, Loch Ness Monster hoax. You guys remember the Loch Ness Monster hoax? Uh, where some dude put a toy in the water. Re I mean, it looks exactly like it, honestly. I'm going to need a little more than that. And two kids watched it for 10 minutes. 
58 people on the Ethan Allen, which capsized earlier a couple months ago, you know, uh, people, uh, some people think they all ran to one side to see something and fl flipped the boat over. I don't know, maybe it's just too many Twinkies, but uh, <laughs> the captain on board back in 898 said, if you, if you think what I saw was a fish, it weighed 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. The Bible talks about the dragons of the waters. He shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. In Pensacola, where I live, Four or five teenagers went scuba diving back in 1962. <clears throat> One survived the trip. Here's what he said. They were going out to the sunken ship in the Pensacola Harbor called the Massachusetts. And here's what he said. Uh, I've got tons of stuff on this. He said, we were in an Air Force rescue raft bound for a sunken ship a few miles off the coast. Midway out, we were caught in a storm and dragged out to sea. When the storm cleared, we were in a dense fog. We began to hear strange noises like the splashing of a porpoise and a sickening odor like dead fish. The noise got closer to the raft, and I heard a loud hissing sound. Out in the fog, we saw what looked like a long pole about 10 feet high sticking up out of the water. On top was a bulb-like structure. It bent in the middle and went under. It appeared several more times, getting closer to the raft. The silence was broken once again by something out of the fog. I can only describe it as a high-pitched whine. We panicked. All five of us put on our fins and went into the water. Keep together and try for the ship, I yelled. After we got in the water, we got split up in the fog, and from behind I could hear the screams of my comrades one by one. I got a closer look at the thing just before my last friend went under. The neck was about 12 feet long, brownish green and smooth looking. The head was like a sea turtle, except more elongated. The eyes were green with oval pupils. I don't know how long it was before I heard a scream. It lasted maybe half a minute. Then I heard Warren's call, hey, help me, it's got Brad, I've got to get out of here. His voice was cut off abruptly by a short cry. Brad, Warren, hey, where is everybody? I yelled back at the top of my lungs. Larry now swam with Eric and me. Warren and Brad were nowhere in sight. Right next to Eric, that telephone pole-like figure broke water. I could see the long neck and two small eyes. The mouth opened and it bent over. It dove on top of Eric, dragging him under. I screamed and began to swim past the ship. My insides were shaking uncontrollably. Okay, so that's an interesting story. And then everyone clapped, right? Have we ruled out the possibility that he killed his friends and came out with a fantastical story to defend himself from prosecution? Has that been ruled out? How did people rule that possibility out? Why should we believe anything this guy says? Who is this guy? Like, none of this makes any sense, and it is the least likely scenario possible. But Kenthoven believes this one because it backs up his already existing beliefs. No critical thinking skills to be found here. None. He drew a sketch of the thing that killed his friends. He said, I finally made it to the top of the uh, ship and stayed there most of the night. Next morning, I swam to shore, was found by the rescue unit. That's the sketch Brian McCleary drew of what he saw that killed his four friends. If somebody drew this sketch and told me that this creature killed my four friends, or killed their four friends... I would believe that they were the actual murderers and trying to get out of it, honestly. This is one of the most far-fetched stories I've heard in my life. And I, I'm not even sure that this is like a real story. Like, I'm not sure that this is true. This could have come from a fantasy book. This could have come from like a, a fiction book, like a story book or whatever. And, and Ken Hovind would just read it as though it was real. Because that's what he tends to do. I mean, he read from the dictionary earlier to prove that, like, dinosaurs are alive and real. That's like reading from the dictionary. That's like reading the, the dictionary definition of unicorn and saying, see, the dictionary acknowledges that unicorns are real. Why would it be in the dictionary if they weren't real? Seriously. This is simply disconnected from reality. This is conspiracy theory to the fullest extent. I was speaking in Fort Walton Beach, Florida one time, and Valerie Bill came to me and said, Mr. Hoven, my, my stepson, Larry Bill, was one of the kids who was eaten. That story you are telling is correct. But the Pensacola News Journal said, after they interviewed him, they said, this is a beach town. You know, people come here to go swimming. We're not going to report that your friends got eaten by a dinosaur. We're going to report that they drowned. So that's Well, that's a reasonable thing to report because there's no evidence that they were eaten by a dinosaur. 
if you provide evidence of this, it'll be a different story. But they didn't. They provided no evidence whatsoever. Honestly, this is just crazy shit. He is out here telling people dinosaurs are real and alive today, right now, and providing pretty much no evidence, no good evidence, anecdotes from people that he claims to have met. This is just straight up bizarre. What the newspaper said, four teenagers drowned. Panama City, there's something seen there similar. Youth director at a Lutheran church told me his whole youth group was in the van and they saw a creature like that in Panama City Harbor. There have been many reports of dinosaurs still living. There could be some pterodactyls still alive. The natives call the animal the Kongomato. If you're in uh, Congo, in, Bat in Kenya, they call it Batamzinga. Uh, Steve Romani was, Romandi was on the Kenya Olympic running team. He called me and said, he was going to school in uh, Louisiana. He said, Mr. Hoven, I saw those creatures. He said, we've got them in my village in Kenya. He said, their favorite food is decaying human flesh. They dig up graves and eat the bodies. They kept talking about the Kangamato. Well, we could cover dinosaurs still living for hours, but there have been lots of reports of pterodactyls still around. I get calls about this from people all the time, about pterodactyls being seen in Papua New Guinea or in uh, Indonesia or in Venezuela. Why is he pronouncing these incorrectly? Papua New Guinea? It's Papua New Guinea, and it's not Venezuela. Is that what he said? It's Venezuela. What is wrong with this guy? Papua New Guinea or in uh, Indonesia or in Venezuela. Wish we had time to cover all that, about all these pterodactyl sightings. Uh, Dave Wetzel went there and said, man, the natives kept talking about this flying ropen that glows in the dark over in Papua New Guinea. It lives on the island right there. So what's the point? You say, Brother Hovind, who cares? Yeah, I think there might be some dinosaurs still alive. And I think we have really been lied to about the dinosaurs. Now, I don't think there's many, and it's probably safe to go to the dorm, okay? Don't get excited and think, wow, we're going to get eaten by a dinosaur. No, it's not that way. The hallway will be clear tonight, I assure you, okay? But the Indians had a legend called the Thunderbird. They said a giant bird got hit. Are you kidding me? More of these? This is obviously completely fake, and he is absolutely insistent on proving that it's real. It's an embarrassment. By lightning, when they found it three days later, the buzzards had picked the bones clean, but they said the wingspan was 20 feet and had a bony bump on the back of its head. The Indian prayer sticks, to this day, have the head of a pterodactyl on them. Now, Henry Ford put an eagle on the taillight of his thunderbird. It should have been a pterodactyl. You blew it, Henry. Uh, French explorers uh, Jacques Marquette and Joliet stopped near what now is the town of St. Louis and reported they saw a big, ugly bird painted on the cliff on the other side in Alton, Illinois. Claimed they saw this? Can't people just go there and look? The Indians said, oh, that's a Piasaw bird. A great chief killed him years ago. They painted the picture up there for years. They finally put a big metal plaque. There's me down below it for scale. They took it down for fear the plaque would fall. I guess they just recently put it back up. I don't know. But if you go to Alton, Illinois, you'll see Piasaw, you know, Piasaw Dairy Queen. <laughs> it's pretty famous over there, whatever the Piasaw bird was. Okay. And we talk a lot about that. Um, People say, Brother Hovind, why do you speak about dinosaurs? Well, for one thing, Satan's using them to teach his gospel. It's time Christians, you know, put up a defense. Christians are confused where they fit in. They are a great evangelistic tool. Kids will gather around you like crazy when you get dinosaurs. He's the chief of the ways of God. Well, then God ought to get the glory. Now, the Bible also talks about Leviathan, but that's a whole other story. We'll cover Leviathan some other time. Yeah, I think Leviathan is like a whole section, like a whole seminar episode or something that he does. Uh, does a whole section on it. That's going to be a fascinating seminar. Um, I think that's I think that's the next one. As a matter of fact, this is seminar three. I could be wrong. I think Leviathan is uh, Leviathan is seminar four. Uh, you know what? Let me just look. No, hang on. Kentoven seminar four. Yeah, that okay, the next one is lies in the textbooks. Number 5 is the dangers of evolution. Number 6 is the Hovind theory. And number 7 is questions and answers apparently. And that one's the shortest of them it looks like. Wow, I can't wait to hit every one of these. 
I'm not seeing a seminar episode titled Leviathan, but I think it's the next one. Number four lies in the textbook. We're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, I use Ken Tovind as filler between like when I'm doing a specific set of episodes or whatever. But my God, I love this stuff. This is so interesting when he covers all this. Anyway, let's keep listening. Talks about Leviathan, but that's a whole other story. We'll cover Leviathan some other time. So basically, God made everything in six days. Dinosaurs lived with man. People have killed most of them. There could be a few still alive. And Christians need to quit worrying about dinosaurs and start using them for God's glory. No. No to basically all of that. Cover more on that in the next session. Yep, that's the end of it, I guess. The following video clips are of interviews with people who claim to have seen living dinosaur-like creatures. Wow. This is just unhinged stuff, man. Unhinged stuff. Doing these debunk streams reminds me of your first video where you were debunking Kent's claims. It's kind of neat how, in a way, you're going back to your roots, but instead of doing it on YouTube, you're doing it on Twitch. That's true, and I'm uploading it to YouTube. Yeah, that's old school. One of my earliest videos. Um, my first video was actually on Reza Oslin, and yeah, it was Reza Oslin, I think. Uh, I haven't t covered him since, but yeah. He was talking shit about atheists, basically. Well, this is Kent Hovind. It is uh, August 31st, 1993. I'm sitting here at the Antique Quest in Winchester, New Hampshire, with uh, Sandy Mancy. It's good to see you again, Sandy. I saw you uh, back in 92. And Sandy is the one that saw uh, Champ. Her picture appears on the cover of the book uh, by Joseph Zarzinski. Uh, this was, this took, why don't you tell us uh, when it was and where you were and just a little bit about it. I was in Vermont, on the Vermont side, and my husband, when we weren't married at the time, my fiance and my children, we were exploring the lake. I grew up in that area. And we were just exploring the lake, sitting there, enjoying the peace and quiet. My husband had gone back to the car to get the camera. And while he was gone, there was a disturbance in the lake. And wow, convenient. The husband had gone to pick up the camera from the car. And that means he wasn't... Not only was he not there to see this dinosaur in the lake, but also he didn't have a camera. Like, neither of them had a camera with them. How convenient, huh? That is so convenient. Almost, almost captured that dinosaur on film, but that close. I looked out and I thought perhaps it was a school of fish, and maybe a scuba diver or something. And then the head and the neck broke the surface of the water, and the head picked up in the neck and the back. And I knew it wasn't a fish. Right. <laughs> well, great. And some people said they, 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 I heard somebody told you that they thought maybe it was a duck. If it's about a 2,000 pound duck. A 2,000 pound duck. When we were at the church, when you came to hear me speak up in the uh, um, wherever that was, New Hampshire, Dublin, New Hampshire, you, uh, I had all my dinosaurs on the table, and you immediately picked out this one as champ, but you said it was a little different, what you saw. Yes, what I saw is the neck was not near as long, and the head is shaped bright, like a horse head, but the neck is not near as long. Okay, now, there are three or four different types of swimming dinosaurs that bones have been found of. There's the chronosaur, which has a huge neck, the plesiosaur, which you're holding, and then there's the elasmosaur. Uh, had a shorter neck, and the head is at a right angle to the body instead of in line with the body. Uh, there may be others, of course, undiscovered yet, but get that where they can see it on the camera. Uh, I like. I honestly don't even see the point of Kent Hovind trying to convince everybody that dinosaurs are real. Like, what's the point? Let's say dinosaurs are real, hypothetically. So? It doesn't mean Jesus died for your sins. None of it means that. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. I just don't get the point. Kent Hovind needs dinosaurs to live with humans for his conspiracy theory to be true. He needs that to be the case. But even if it were the case, it doesn't disprove evolution. It just means that there are, like, crazy big creatures out there today. That's it. So Kent... In my opinion, this is like a futile effort. Like, it's pointless. Why bother? It doesn't prove anything. It's just, if he doesn't disprove 
dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. He's wrong. That's the problem here. Anyway, so that's Ken Tovin. That's his Seminar 3 series. If you haven't seen the others, I think they're pretty interesting. He goes completely off the rails on a lot of bizarre stuff. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to hit Seminar 4 soon. That was that one was a zinger. <laughs>